Well, good early afternoon, everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic coming to you from Port Angeles, Washington. Again, on the other side of the Strait of Juan de Fuca over there is the country of Canada over there, on the mainland over there. Uh, bear with me today, guys. I need you on my side. We need to find and make sure it doesn't have any of that liquid stuff coming down today because we're going for a heck of a ride all the way to the northwestmost tip of the continental United States today. All right, thanks for joining me, guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet. Link below in the video description. You know, at first when I walked up to this and saw the ear, I thought this was a, was a dog. No, these are sea lions. It's a mama sea lion pup there and her, and her three babies there. Really, really well known. In fact, let's go to the water here. You know what these lanes are uh, right here? It's for the ferry. Port Angeles is a major port. A big uh, ferry port here. Yeah, let me climb up here real quick. So that's where the ferry will pick you up and haul you over to uh, British Columbia, Canada over there. Or I think they also have some trips that leave here, go all the way out to the Pacific Ocean and then either go up towards Alaska or maybe even down the Pacific Ocean over there. I'm not sure. You got Down Riggers Wharf next door, but I'm all geared up today, guys. This is, this is a riding day. We're going to be on the bike for about two hours one way to get all the way up to the northwesternmost tip so again well we've got blue skies there but where i just came from at camp was this so it was drizzling at camp where the kitties and the rv are at uh but i think since we're gonna be moving this way we're gonna be okay so let's go for a ride guys i guess this part of the country is also railroad country as well it'll steel iron worker here hammering in the uh railroad nails there spikes so that's cool all right and before we gear up um i had to make i had to make one change because after we got this fairing put on the uh stock blinkers lights up here if we go down they are blocked on both sides so um even though i didn't want to swap out the stock mirrors I now have blinker mirrors on here that are raised up. I just didn't want to get in trouble and have a cop at the other intersection and see me turning without seeing these bullet blinkers down here. So these still work. So the stock blinkers still work. These also work up here. I'm just not in love with, you know, this, if I were going to upgrade the mirrors, those are not the ones I would have went with, but it works. All right, get my helmet on, zip up, and we will head northwest. Wow, what a ride, guys. Sorry, I don't have a helmet cam on my full face yet see i just haven't invested in it because i really don't like my full face helmet anyway i want it to warm up so i can just wear my half face all the time but you know i really wish i could have shared that on the map it looks like it's just a straight shot it is not it is nothing but twists and turns and you're you're going 60 miles an hour and then it just says 25 miles an hour around another curve and <laughs> look at this the town of siku siku washington something weird over here I'll uh, fix the camera situation here pretty soon, guys, because I would like to be able to share more perspective uh, from the bike as we're traveling. There's our welcome sign. Did I pronounce that right? Siku? Sayuku? And uh, it's one happy fish. I don't see a plaque or any information. I don't even know what her name is, but she's got pink tennis shoes and a uh, little pink skirt there. She looks kind of cold. Oh, and a, and a pink swimming suit bra there. Yeah. Is that made of wood? pretty sure yeah it's made out of wood very nice and she's just you know keeping an eye on all the fishermen down there <laughs> all right i am layered up i got three pairs of pants two t-shirts two sweaters and the vest and the temperature is dropping rapidly guys at the peak of today it was only 58 degrees here and uh, it's going to get down into the 30s tonight. I do not want to be out at night, too, because there's a lot of wildlife back on these twisting roads for the bike. So let me finish the last hour of this ride and get back to you when we get up to the point. All right. Well, this is the uh, end of the driving part. We got we to gotta hike in to get there here at Cape Flattery. So um, I'll lock everything up and uh, go for a walk. The hike, pretty popular today. A lot of people going up and down the trail. We're going to see a lot of these huge 
old trees. It's been uh, many years since I've been back on this trail. If I remember correctly, it's mostly downhill. It does say that it's a 25 minute hike in and then it depends on how quickly you are back up the hill because I am actually putting, putting, putting the brakes on going downhill. But man, absolutely blessed by the weather gods today. <laughs> it is beautiful. Look, sun's peeking out up there. I cannot wait to see this in the sun. Oh my, really muddy. I'm gonna go over here. Really muddy trail here. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Okay, well, I gotta test this out because uh, I need to see if I still fit. If not, I'm gonna have to blame tater tots. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, you know what? It's, it's, it's the vest. It's not the tater tots. It's the vest. Dang it. Nope, not happening. Wow, they built this little raised bridge here. I like that. Very pretty trail. I'm digging it. Yeah. Wow. All right, it's starting to clear up through here. Still very, very muddy walking trail. I'm gonna ruin my New Balance tennis shoes here, but it's all worth it. Okay, oh cool, path here. And uh, look, it's opening up through here. I think we're getting close, guys. Yeah, we got our first viewpoint coming up over here. Ready for this, guys? <laughs> Say hello to Cape Flattery up here. That is the Pacific Ocean out there. We're gonna get a better view here in a minute though. Okay, and coming up on viewpoint number two, holy cow. I think this is a good spot to stand and peek. Wow. This is the uh, north side here. Jeez. Oh, stop it. Just stop it right now. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. I feel like I should probably just not talk. Except it feels like it's the Key West of the Pacific Northwest. It's a lot to take in. It's breathtakingly beautiful here, guys. If you're ever in this area, once again, check out Cape Flattery. We are now standing, well, actually, I'm gonna step over here, standing on the northwest most corner of the continental United States right now. Heck yeah. We got a long hike back. It's probably gonna take me 45 minutes because I'm a little out of shape these days. It's okay. And thank you, Mother Nature. I'm so out of shape, guys. Halfway up, just checked my Apple Watch. My heart rate's at 168. <clears throat> I shed layers. <laughs> so out of shape. <sighs> it's embarrassing. <sighs> it's not keeping me from trying things. Nope. <sighs> Made it back up in 34 minutes. I think that's pretty good but I don't want to get caught in the dark. So I'm going to gear up, start heading back. Cause I don't want to ride in the dark with deer around those corners. So get back to the camp. I'm so cold and ready for summer in the Pacific Northwest. Oh my gosh. It did start sprink sprinkling on me. So I, I pulled off at an old, old place where I used to uh, camp for free right here. This is one of my uh, favorite little spots to camp right on the beach and uh without i mean there's one sign and i don't even really know if i take it seriously or not actually i do take it seriously so on this fence no camping or overnight parking that's new um they added some porta potties there but used to be a really cool spot to camp on the beach here Looks like that may be why it's uh, 
empty right now. Possibly they're enforcing no more camping here. And that's sad. Look at all this driftwood. Anyone building a uh, saltwater fish tank? A lot of driftwood here. <laughs> it goes driftwood and then rocks and then dark sand and then <laughs> lots of seaweed. Lots. I'm telling you, this stuff reeks. It is nasty. Nasty. Pretty unique to the Northwest, though, right? Look at that. It's like a weird jelly material and uh then this weird ball what the heck okay anyways hey 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 summer S summer summer where are you not here well let's get back to camp check on the kitties all right so i just got back to camp here at Lyra river no uh, sunshine, but none of that other stuff falling from the sky either. And um, uh, I was here and the uh, ranger, the warden as they call, he's actually called the warden. That's what it says on his truck. That's his job title. So the warden of the DNR campground here was here doing uh, some garbage pickups. And uh, I, I asked him a couple questions. Uh, first of all, this site, site six, I just want to let you guys know that on July 3rd, Site 6 will not be available to the public anymore. There is a seasonal camp post coming in and they are gonna be working from about July 3rd until September 1st. And they're, they're gonna put the new the sign back up that says host site over there and uh, unlock the power and the water, as well as see this campground, there's a jet fighter up there somewhere way up there. Uh, unlike some of the other Washington State DNR campgrounds that had gotten demolished, closed forever, especially the ones on the river, this one they actually did put money into. And um, so several years ago, maybe four or five years ago, they added power. Hey, sunshine. Hey, summer. Is that, is that you, summer? So they added power to this site. They also added drinking water, which you don't even get this at Margaret McKinney. This is approved drinking water. So they had to bring the power and the water down the hill from the road out there to the campground, which was not cheap. And uh, when it's busy here, there's even a, a dumpster here, a little two yard container dumpster here. Otherwise, any other times, usually garbage is not provided, but it is. But one of the exciting pieces of information that the warden told me is that they're going to be doing something that is first of its kind in a, a DNR managed campground that is basically free with the Discover Pass. And that is they're gonna splice off the existing power and they are going to change several sites to power hookup sites for RVs and charge an additional fee for that service in the future. Um, just kind of a way to generate a little bit of extra income for the park because like I said, it was a huge expense to bring power and water down the hill to this campground and maintain it. Um, I, I personally am very excited that, that, that there is going to be a camp post here. It's a voluntary program. And uh, he said that usually this campground gets over a hundred applications per year to do it. So unlike Margaret McKinney, where Steve and Ginny just get it, get to be the camp host every single year because they've been there, this one's different. And they let new people be the camp host every season. And if they don't work out, they'll even replace them halfway through the season. So um, if you visit here in July or August, you, you won't get to stay at this awesome site six because it will transform into a camp post site. But anyways, guys, um, I'm feeling really good. That was that was a, a really nice bike ride. And like and like I said, you know, I'm I'm also testing the motorcycle, the practicality of towing the trailer with the motorcycle instead of the car and stuff. And as long as the weather cooperates, I do like the bike a lot. I really do. It fits. It just works. It's fun. It's unique. There there really aren't that many RV travelers whose only tow vehicle is a motorcycle. So, 
Northwest Haylire River. You guys want to see the kitties? Hey, Terra Bear. You know, it's only two hours past dinner. Just so you know, it's only two hours past her dinner time. Opie, did you tell Tara it's not even that late? I'm going to do it right now, though. I'm going to put it in your bowl bowls. All right, guys. I missed you guys. You handsome devil. You pretty girl. Yeah, pretty girl. I know Opie and Tara are... They are their own kitty cats and cannot be compared or be expected to compare to anyone else, but I do kind of miss our our dinner conversations with, with Jax that we had all, all the time. These kitties don't, don't seem to talk too much. Opie, he talks a little bit. But um, anyways, guys, I got a few things to put away. I'm going to put the motorcycle away in, in the garage there. And uh, then going to be only staying here one more night and then moving on. So where do we go from here in the next journey of the Northwest? Well, again, it'd, it'd be nice if it warmed up. <laughs> But guys, you be well. I love this campground. If you've been here, tell me in the comments below what you think of this campground here at Liar River Campground. And from Opie and Tara and I, well, we'll see you on the road somewhere else in a few days. Bye, guys.